Howdy. Hey, how's it going? Doing great. How are y'all doing? Doing pretty doing good, all right. man. Thanks yeah, doing for all right. taking the time to chat with us. Oh, the pleasure is mine. Well, I think, I think, didn't I say I wanted to talk to you guys a while back? I was playing Banjo Kazooie and somebody linked me a video. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saw I, I you were live. That blush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. sorry about that. Actually, I remember at the time uh, we were down to discuss, but we had a guest that was like all queued up, ready to go. And it was kind of an important conversation, you know, not just the typical uh, drama mongering that we, cur that we, uh, tur typically do so we wanted to get to that but you know we're glad to finally engage with you obviously we were telling the audience that we've made a lot of content reviewing your various takes and you know we have given you credit in the past where we uh, agree but obviously there's been a lot of times too where we disagree and i think that foreign policy is you know clearly one of those um points of disagreement between myself and zach and you vosh so i think this is a really good context to have this debate i know you put out a video responding to um zach and i's reaction to your take on drones and i think there's a little bit of confusion about that off the Maybe bat so the direct convos are always <laughs> better i know how things get um they, it's it's not just about confusion either it's about tone you know people mm. are always going to be more charitable when you're speaking directly <laughs> to someone no I'm, I'm happy to be uh talking to you guys you know i actually just came off the cusp of having a convo with somebody who was uh in favor of the sentiment of the iraq war so i'm actually all primed for the um <laughs> for the the foreign policy talks oh god yeah i hope that we're a little bit more uh reasonable than whoever that was i don't know how you could possibly defend the uh, i'm sure iraq you guys war. are pro iraq war too you know, it's, <laughs> we're, we're all reasonable people here well it's a good it's a good segue vosh because you know the video that we uh reacted to that in turn you reacted to of ours um had to do a little bit with the drone war um and, and just the war on terror in general in the post 9-11 era and uh, we you got really hung up on your video about this whole thing are drones better than mines and, and in your opinion we seemingly misinterpreted your argument um you said that no i wasn't saying drones are good obviously not i was just saying that drones are you know clearly better than mines as a form of warfare mines you know obviously kill far 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 more civilians so uh, obviously just off the bat you're 100 percent right about that and if we didn't specify that no that wasn't the argument we were trying to make and sorry if it came off that way we weren't trying to like you know paint you in the incorrect light or an inaccurate light so you know just off the bat uh wanted to get that clear but i think the point that we were you know trying to hammer you on a little bit more or that we were at least trying to express our disagreement with um and i can i can play it if you want just in case you like want to deny that you said this or whatever but um what you said that i really took issue with was um we have a solid justification for engaging in drone strikes in afghanistan to this day that was the real meat of the issue where i disagreed with you um i think that even when it comes to killing uh al-qaeda leader someone that was responsible for 9 11 i still don't think that justifies our drone war policy um and in fact i think it feeds into the exact you know state department um imperialist logic that ends up justifying the drone war in the first place which obviously kills indiscriminate hundreds of thousands of civilians far more by the way that were killed in 9 11 in the first place um so generally i just don't think that the extrajudicial assassinations via drone are accept acceptable under basically any circumstance and that was the gist of my beef with your take yeah i guess it's well it's it, so there are two sides to this there's the drone side and the extrajudicial execution side drones are here to stay whether we like it or not because they're just the next step in warfare they're going to be adopted eventually by every country that can afford them um you know why would anyone ever risk um you know c committing a pilot all the training and the cost of a plane you know to make these hits or whatever so drones are here to stay it's their application that people are concerned with um and uh, when it comes to the extrajudicial assassinations, I guess the main issue that I have is that these days terrorism is capable of being so international. And I don't really know what the best mechanism would be for retaliation against terrorist groups um, outside of stuff like this. It feels like drones make it make it as about as good as can be, all things considered, right? You wouldn't want to do another invasion of Afghanistan every time a former al-Qaeda leader popped up. That'd Agreed, be kind of but bad. It, I, and I want to ask this, like, genuinely, I, I really want to know your opinion, because you mentioned on the live stream, or your reaction live stream yesterday to us, um, when we made this point about the extrajudicial assassination, you're like, what, are we just supposed to go arrest him? And I, and I genuinely want to know, why do you not think that's a possibility? Like, if we have the ability to, you know, wage the um, militaristic efforts that we do abroad, and we have the ability to occupy countries, do you really think it would like be impossible for us to uh, send a, a team of, you know, 
CIA agents or whatever the hell to go apprehend this guy so we could, you know, give him a trial by jury and, and we don't have to sacrifice the, you know, a very intrinsically American value of habeas corpus in the process, the, you know, logic of which has led to the atrocities at Guantanamo Bay and all of these other, you know, war crimes committed in the name of anti-terrorism? Well, I think, I, I think that in the context of warfare, which I think is kind of the attitude, certainly we take with Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, whatever, I don't think that the habeas corpus attitude is necessarily maintained. You know, obviously we can't put on trial every soldier we encounter. We could send people to arrest, but I mean, wouldn't that be worse? I, I mean, if you if you wanted to send in SEAL Team Six every time you wanted to bring in some forder, uh, former you know terrorist leader, first of all, people are going to die because they're all holed up in compounds. You know, we send folks in with guns. Uh, more people will die that way uh, without trial. You know, guards, whatever, um, than you'd get with a drone strike. Uh, well, if you manage to get them alive, which is not a guarantee, by the way, especially with some of the more, you know, uh, suicide vest prone terrorist leaders. We don't know how gung ho they are with their own livelihoods. Um, and, and you would also have to commit troops to the ground, which is like, I don't know. I feel like internationally people would think a lot less of the idea of like a, like a, a, a like a Navy ship with with seals coming out, like the whole like process of extraditing somebody, killing their guards, bringing them to the U.S. You know, I, it, it's a really tough situation. I don't know if that'd be better. It might just be more old fashioned, I guess. Well well, I think that, you know, and, and you know, I'll, I'll just break in here. I, I, I hear a lot of what you're saying, right? Obviously, there's a net benefit for the United States and, you know, our ambitions globally if we are able to, instead of sending our soldiers over somewhere uh, to, as you mentioned, not only die, but to kill, uh, you know, the protectorates or the sol uh, guards of any of these terrorist leaders that we're after. Uh, however, I think it just comes back down to what I would consider to be, you know, sort of a, a matter of principle for how we're going to conduct ourselves internationally. And I think that, if we're, I, I'm not ready to concede that, you know, we're just going to accept the death toll from, you know, this international military industrial complex that makes a massive trove of money off of these civilian drone deaths. And I think that, of course, we have to Okay, if I can just finish with this one point okay, really sure. quickly. I just want to I just want to say that I think that obviously right now with the system that we have laid out, all of the arguments that you're saying, they make sense. But I think from my perspective and the perspective that Gavin and I are trying to unfold here as, you know, people who view themselves as like staunchly anti-war in, in basically every circumstance that, um, and that's not to say that I'm here to like fucking sim for Russia on your team. Obviously, we have like solidarity for Ukrainian people and grandmothers and all that kind of shit, right? We're not tankies. But uh, I, I'm just saying that I think that if we're, we're going to really reevaluate the United States global position uh, on the militaristic stage uh, from and, and start leading by example, right? Uh, that we would have to unfortunately do things uh, that are going to uh, be uh, basically terrible for us to continue to try and operate as we have eight, uh, 800 plus military bases around the world. I think we'd have to bring back a draft. I think we'd have to you know, engage in civilian combat where we have a civilian army because then it forces the actual people on the ground here. Uh, and this is a Noam Chomsky argument, by the way. I know you're giving me the side eye uh, that if you force the civilians to be drafted, then they will no longer be okay with these senseless ambitions abroad, that we will no longer put our lives in favor of the money for Boeing, that we will no longer put our lives in favor of the uh, money for Raytheon. And, in, and if we don't do that, then we are just saying that, okay, we're going to let business be run as usual. And as you said, Vosh, then the drone war will be here to stay. But I'm just wondering, do you have any thoughts on an effort to eradicate a drone war, to upend a military industrial complex, even if you think that it's politically untenable at the moment? Yeah, there was a lot loaded in there. I'm a huge advocate for reducing our military expenditures and retracting our position as like um, world police officers. Um, what I'm saying right now with regards to like the drone striking of terrorist leaders, I would apply to any country that can get away with it. You know, so England doesn't have 800 military bases across the world, you know, or India or whatever. But if there was some the reason I think Afghanistan is special is because it's essentially a terrorist state. I mean, it basically is now with the Taliban in charge, um, meaning there's not diplomacy isn't really on the table. It's just not a mechanism that's viable there. If it was possible to extradite people, you know, if Afghanistan was cooperative to the point where we could be like, hey, we'll give you guys, I don't know, what do you want? You know, billions, just we'll, we'll give you something. Can you give us the Al Qaeda person? You know, great. I think that'd be lovely. It would be a great sign of trust. The Afghanistan situation as it stands right now is a lot more complicated. And it seems like there's a greater pretext for, um, you know, just sort of a, a free for all Fortnite match over who gets to merc the Al Qaeda leaders first. Um, when it comes to the drone war stuff, 
uh, drones are, are 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 here to stay. Um, they're they're just a, a an advancement technologically in terms of the means of killing people at a distance. Uh, it's how we use them that really really matters. I am happy that the U.S. military industrial complex has made an effort to make drones and their strikes less likely to kill civilians with that ninja missile shit they're doing. I think that's a good step. Um, because ideally, you know, you wouldn't want to kill any civilians. Many civilians are going to die as a product of any uh, military action. The goal would be to reduce that as much as possible. And I guess it would be a, uh, a trade-off. What level of civilian deaths are you willing to accept as a trade-off for any successful military action? We have to right. consider this with anything. World War II, you know, the invasion of the Pacific. I mean, any military action entails with it a threat. Drones have a uniquely low likelihood of civilian deaths relative to other mechanisms. Obviously, ground war is going to harm a lot more civilians if you're trying to kill like one guy on the ground. Like a drone's a way more effective way of doing it. Fair. Um, so, it, so all this stuff's really complicated. I don't have any like hard jingoistic answers for stuff like this because part of it is like the inevitable material advancement of means of warfare, and part of it is like the cultural place that America operates on at the world stage. Well, and there's an intersection there that's really, really tough. Well, let's talk about the cultural place where America stands in the world right now because you're saying that Afghanistan is a terrorist state, and while I might agree with you, I think from the perspective of the Afghani people or you know a lot of other Middle Eastern people in general, we would be a terrorist state. As I mentioned, our drone strike and airstrikes have killed well over 50,000 people since 9-11, which killed 3,000 people. Um, again, that's civilian murders um, carried out by the United States. So according to your logic, and I brought this up in our video, you mostly laughed it off, uh, but do you really want to live in the world where Al-Qaeda is you know, okay to drone our leaders, a uh, drone George Bush, Barack Obama, um, Joe Biden? If, if the logic you're extending to their drone strikes applies then, you know, do you really want to live in a world where every country is just drone striking their adversary? I think that's not really a, a, an ideal geopolitical situation that anyone would want to operate in, especially not from like a pacifist perspective. No, I get that. I'm So when I say terrorist, I should be more clear, you know, um, the United States is a sponsor of a great deal of state terrorism. I would never deny that. Um, it's more a matter of what alternatives do you have. In Afghanistan, no option exists at the moment with the Taliban in charge outside of you know, throwing a, a bomb and a match in. Um, it, it, there's just not really a mechanism for diplomatic engagement. In right. The US, of course, their, their, their vehicle for diplomatic engagement was 9-11. That's the problem. The same well, logic that you're applying to our drone strikes, they applied to the attack on America in 9-11. They were getting well, back at us for our terrorism and war crimes. Well, I don't think it's necessarily fair to compare a terrorist attack against civilians to a targeted strike on an Al-Qaeda official does it really matter what the like reason is if fifty thousand plus civilians end up massacred does it really matter what the well, i mean Kavash, one the, sec you when you talk about russia and ukraine you always say you always say well of course there's going to be a justification for everything of course putin is going to justify his invasion of ukraine somehow obviously no one does these militaristic actions without justification well the only thing that separates our terrorism from al-qaeda's is that you think they have a better justification the same thing that you constantly rail against other you know geopolitical superpowers for using as excuses for their crimes well, the difference is the justification that Putin is using is a pretext for war. Um, in this case, though, whether or not you should kill a person is actually heavily influenced by the legitimacy of any you know crime you would try to pin to them, right? I don't think the people in you know the the towers necessarily did anything wrong, apart from being uh, financiers uh, and New Yorkers. Um, but um, <laughs> you, you know the the Al Qaeda man, you know he certainly. Uh, he certainly earned our spite. It's it's really like a matter of what you can get away with, right? And what like what the best option is given the context um, of that situation. So this is the reason why I was massively against the attack on um, Soleimani in the Iraqi airport. You know, now I don't like Iran. Uh, they do state-sponsored terrorism. They got some of their folks to shoot missiles at our bases. You know, very cringe, not great. Soleimani, massive piece of shit. But doing so, so. Iran is a country you can negotiate with. In fact, it's a country we should be. You know, the uh, Obama steps towards the, you know, the the the, the Iran peace deal. Um, Probably the best thing he ever did. Oh, oh no, yeah, 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 like huge shit right there, right? Like 
I want Iran to be treated as like an honored diplomatic guest. Do I like the country? No. Do I like America? No. You know, what, what am I, a hypocrite? Um, just murking one of their guys in an airport is insane, like fucking wild to me. Because it feels like if you have issues with what Soleimani is doing, and don't get me wrong, he did a lot of bad stuff, there's another avenue. There's always another avenue you can go through. When it comes to Afghanistan and like former al-Qaeda leaders, I'm a bit more laissez-faire because it feels like any of the alternate options we have in that context would involve potentially risking greater international trouble. Um, no American leader would ever risk losing a... Um, you know, like a like a member of a, a SEAL team, right? Trying to apprehend someone they could just like fuck, annihilate from eight miles away, right? And it, it might cause more death to just do that. So it seems like we're kind of trading deaths here. I mean, um, I a, definitely get what you're petty. saying. Like, I I get the theory behind drone warfare and and why like you're uh, saying that it's better than the alternative. I definitely understand that. But again, I think by like feeding into the post nine eleven eleven war on terror logic of just throwing habeas corpus in the trash i really do think you're feeding into the exact same talking points which led to the atrocities committed at guantanamo bay committed against untold you know hundreds of innocent people that were tortured or killed or you know killed as collateral damage again under this guise of anti-terrorist war on terror activity which continues to this day um so uh, well, can, wait, here, can I here's ask a, you oh, yeah i just because i'm curious right so International terrorism is easier now than ever before, right? Like, you know, the way we're all connected. If there were people in Afghanistan, let's just some new, you know, some new fucking leader, whatever, he pops up, funds a terrorist attack, directly leads to 17 people dying in France or whatever, right? You know, people are mad, something has to be done. But dude's somewhere in Afghanistan, he's in a fortress, you know. Do you think, and I'm seriously asking, there's like three options, right? You drone strike, easy. Um, you attempt to arrest, potentially very bloody and destructive, but you do get to put them on trial, maybe if they live. Um, or third, you ignore it. Of those three, do you I will, you side with the arrest? Here, let me let me tell you, and I want to explain this a little bit because I think that the conversation we're having is very similar to the conversation surrounding the death penalty. Obviously, I understand uh, why people would say this guy is a complete piece of shit. He deserves to be punished via the death penalty he doesn't deserve life i can sympathize with that argument i can understand why people make that argument in the same way that you're making the argument that you are right now however because of the fact that there's even a less than one percent chance of the wrong person an innocent person dying as a result of the death penalty i'm against it in principle i feel the same way about the drone war and these drone targets you know your hypothetical terrorist who just killed 17 people and will kill again yes i understand the context in which people would say yeah drone the fucker it's going to be way easier and less people will die as a result i understand that just like i understand the logic behind the death penalty but the fact that there's a significant uh likelihood that civilian people innocent people are going to die or even the wrong person altogether numerous times we've said oh we droned the guy and then either we didn't or it was actually someone else uh you know later they it turns out they're still alive um i don't trust the u.s in this instance um, just like I don't trust us to execute the right person. Therefore, in principle, I'm against the entire theory. The difference, though, is that the death penalty is something enacted potentially on a person who's already incarcerated. The alternative to their death is incarceration, meaning they're already under control. Failing to deal with a terrorist leader could lead to them killing again, potentially. Um, and you might enact more death in an attempt to arrest them. You could drone strike them and kill three, or attempt to arrest them by storming a compound, killing 17, including uh, like a SEALs officer. Um, but that happens that case, via drones anyway. That, ha Like I said, 50,000 people plus have died because of the drone war since 9-11. The, that happens I'm, anyway. I'm isolating a circumstance. You're talking about, when you say drone warfare have killed 50,000 plus, you're talking about the modern front of weaponry across all conflict zones across a 20-year period. I'm just talking about this specific hypothetical. If you take a look, like my content broadly, overwhelmingly, I tend to be against what we do with drone strikes. I covered extensively that bullshit under the Biden admin following our retreat from Afghanistan. You can where there was the, those fucking kids kids in the van or whatever who got murked by and the, and the dipshits from the um the feds were like laughing about it and they didn't check their data before like overwhelmingly i'm going to come out against the but processes. like no wonder they won't negotiate with us then right vosh well the i mean the taliban and the al-qaeda uh, officials would never negotiate with us broadly right i mean th they probably wouldn't 
if the Taliban shaped up and turned into like real state administrators, they and they were like capable of international negotiations, I I, I would probably retract all this. I would be like, yeah, we need to talk with them about. Well, this. then that's my question here. If I could just jump in really quickly with, a, you know, one of the other things that I don't think has been mentioned so far is that we are also systematically starving the country of Af Afghanistan of a bunch of its resources right now. In your mm -hmm. mind, is it completely impossible that if we send over some uh, diplomats uh, to say, hey, we, we can negotiate a way of you guys having control of this uh, uh, country again, we give you back these funds, you know, let's, let's, you know, that, that would be the way that's not, you know, let's go in and kill with the drones or let's go put more boots on the ground, right? I'm just wondering why that's not even considered a possibility. And I'm not trying to sound like hippy dippy, whatever, but I'm just saying that if we have something that is leverage, right? Uh, I, the entire fortune of the country of Afghanistan and all of its wealth that, you know, is as a result of our holding on to it is starving all of its people, right? Uh, you know, we hold all of those cards. Uh, don't you think that they would come to the negotiation table if we're like, hey, we will give this back. Uh, but, you know, you you, you kind of have to, you know, in the same way that you said Iran, you know, obviously they do a bunch of fucked up their things. They're a terrorist state, but you believe that, you know, they can be negotiated with and therefore they should be. I'm wondering if you think that there could be some sort of negotiated diplomacy between Afghanistan and the United States. That's like, hey, we will give you back all of this money and resources. Your people will stop uh, starving. They will love you because you are able to be the you know leader that return Afghanistan to, you know, some sort of stability in any kind of sense. Right. Whatever that turns out to be. Uh, and in, in return over the next like 15 or 20 years, you have to meet these kinds of metrics. I don't know. I, again, it, it, it's not like a perfect exa example. I'm not a U.S. diplomat. Uh, you know, I'm a bartender in Kansas City, but I am also but, not a U.S. diplomat. Yeah. So, so but I just to me. Right. It's like that. That just seems like it should at least be on the table for discussion. Right. Like if we're going to be talking about extrajudicial killings, if we're going to be talking about putting troops on the ground, like it just seems uh, absurd to me that we can't look at this obvious potential pathway to you know, diploma, uh, diplomatic kind of agreement that's not going to result in, you know, more deaths. And and even so, Vosh, as a caveat to giving them their money back, I think it would make perfect sense for us to say, OK, then you guys are going to, uh, you know, exist under the rule of international law. And if you engage in terrorism or if one of your uh, citizens engages in international terrorism, then you are going to agree to let the, you know, uh, international community, you know, uh, you know, collect that person and prosecute them for their crimes uh, in front of a trial or a jury or whatever. No, I, I'm, I'm fully in favor of that. As a concept, I'll always lean towards diplomacy, you know, even with countries like Iran and North Korea or whatever, I still think it's like a, the right road to take. Um, it's difficult because the Taliban don't operate in good faith. I mean, they're t like when we say terrorist state, like we know the US and Israel are terrorist states, but like the Taliban are literally a ask terrorist. the native americans if we negotiate in good faith though right oh wait well okay hold on no, we're not defending american you know unilaterally or whatever but right now like the taliban are uninterested in diplomacy um i think that's uh, because we're holding all of their shit hostage right well but they like ideologically there's a disposition there now i think that could be addressed um possibly if if there was some kind of condition like you need to establish a liaison with the united states or with the united nations and you need to be under like international watch and if you do those things then we'll unlock your finances or we'll not sanction you or whatever like i think there might be a way through that eventually the taliban might like grow accustomed to governance and they might chill out a little bit um, that would be ideal because there's really only two options, right? You accept the Taliban control Afghanistan or you remove them, which we already did. And, you know, look where that got us. Right. So clearly not a, you know, not a, not an operate strategy. It's it's unfortunate. I don't like working with people like that because, you know, they suck. Um, but it, it, we only have so many options here. If I there mean, was like a rebel group that we could fight, but then even that got fucked up. We know the Mujahideen. But, yeah. yeah. How how are we going to take the moral high ground though and say you're a terrorist state and we can do whatever if us doing whatever means terrorism and war crimes? Like I, I don't see how that gives us any sort of a moral authority over the situation, and and largely that's why I'm an anti-interventionist in general. It's because huh? even if there are horrible things going on in X patch of dirt and X part of the country or world. Um, yeah, guess what? We're funding and we're enabling a lot more shit that's just as bad, if not worse, around the world, you know, via what we're funding in Israel and Palestine or uh, with Saudi Arabia and Yemen. Like, we have no moral high ground to make these judgments and be like, since we're the world police, as you said earlier, we get a drone strike you and commit war crimes wow. against you because you're not negotiating in good faith. Like, I just see that as kind of a sacrifice of any sort of um, moral authority or credibility we would be bringing to the table in the first place. Um, and, and again, just because this one guy obviously you know fuck him he deserves to die i'm still not going to celebrate it if it uh, legitimizes a broader strategy which you know results in more terrorism itself than the very terrorism it's uh supposed to fight 
I don't think we have moral authority. I just think we have regular authority. We're just the strongest hegemon in the world. We'll do what we want. I just think it's a responsibility. Well, I'm saying we shouldn't. That's all well, my argument is. Is that I, well, we, we, yeah, we, we obviously were the the world hegemon. No one's arguing that. I'm saying that as the Chinese world hegemon, too. we should be a lot more responsible, and we shouldn't be committing war crimes uh, in uh, under the guise of anti terrorism. No, I'm well. I don't think it's a war crime to drone strike the Al Qaeda guy. But but with with regards to like what we can do, we're going to do what whatever we think we can get away with. I think we have a responsibility to rein that in because I don't think that means what we're going to do is morally right. At the end of the day, like whoever is the strongest in the world is going to have a lot of say over the behavior and the organization of the countries that fall under its umbrella. And I think that we have to acknowledge that. And as long as we can acknowledge that, we can make decisions within that framework. So when it comes to Afghanistan, no, nobody's going to leave Afghanistan untouched, right? Like uh, Ch China was making like eyes at Afghanistan before we even removed our troops, you know, with like uh, uh, investment agreements. Everyone wants a piece of every part of the world. So the goal is to make sure that whoever has the right in a, in a, in a, a, a militaristic sense, I guess, to take a piece from the world um, is doing so in the best possible way. As it stands right now, I think we should be pushing for diplomacy and we should be pushing for um, like uh, it, the greatest possible degree of direct civic engagement, even with states like Afghanistan controlled by the Taliban. However, um, as long as they are not uh, willing to work with us under any capacity, if some fucking bombs get dropped on their territory, um, especially when the targets are so deserving, it seems like a relatively innocuous extension of our near unlimited hegemony. Now, that doesn't mean you can't criticize the broader process, you know, the drone war and the fact that right now, like you can just drone strike whoever, right? Like I mean, we can do whatever we want. The fact that we have the ability to unleash that kind of power with so little oversight is a problem. But in specific instances where people like, you know, the Al Qaeda guy get dropped, I, I won't work myself up about it too much. Well, like I said, if a, if a fucking, you know, mass rapist pedophile gets the death penalty i'm not going to shed a tear for him but that doesn't mean i'm going to legitimize and defend the death penalty as a concept are you pro death penalty no i'm not pro death penalty. so would you celebrate if some like asshole piece of shit received the death penalty and died like are, are you going to go out here and be like yeah that was based um if some asshole piece of shit <sighs> damn i kind i kind of might if a system exists that i disagree with Will I celebrate good outcomes from a bad system? Yeah, I have to because I'm an anarchist. Um, I mean, I don't even like the police, right? But I'll still celebrate if a rapist gets arrested. I would never go like, no, well, I don't arrest, like that. Technically, because... an arrest is something that I view as within the bounds of a moral society. I'm not talking about being arrested. I'm talking about the death penalty, which is what drone strikes are just extrajudicially implemented. But if you're an anarchist, any arrest, any incarceration is an exemplification of the power of the judicial system, something that I'm morally opposed to. Um, but, I, but I still celebrate if bad people get arrested, right? As long as we live in a, in a set of unjust systems, I think it's possible to simultaneously celebrate the rare good outcomes while also mm -hmm. condemning the broader like nature of that system. Um, there are lots of systems that I disagree with that still occasionally But the problem is, Vosh, the problem is, Vosh, you didn't just defend the killing of this uh 9-11 mastermind you said at the beginning of your video i believe drone strikes are justifiable in afghanistan period you didn't say in this specific instance and every other instance is you know not acceptable you said broadly it's acceptable to carry out drone strikes in afghanistan at this point despite the fact that we've already agreed from their perspective we're just as bad if not far worse of a terrorist state than they are having you know massacred untold hundreds of thousands more of their people than they ever have here in america um so well, i don't I think just considerations don't... like that are meaningful we're not talking about moral high grounds here only reasonable geopolitical pretext i think that afghanistan is a field in which justifications can be made for drone strikes against legitimate targets because the governance of afghanistan is completely uncooperative with us uh, and also basically just waged a war against the isn't that we the, were isn't that to. the justification that was used to go into afghanistan and iraq in the first place i don't know not at all we had that to lie about iraq um we had to lie like to the un colin powell had to deliver a bunch of made up bullshit about the potential for wmds in iraq and then we lied about like every step of the invasion um and also invasions are a very destructive right so then why would you trust the uh, u.s government and the state department to be calling these shots in a moral way do you, you agree do that you they're trust lying police departments 
Absolutely not. Well, do, do you celebrate if like a local local rapist gets arrested? Well, I think they should have a trial by jury, and that's all I'm advocating here for. But that's still an extension of the power of the judicial Okay, you system, can't say no? that a drone strike is the same thing as a policeman arresting someone. I understand well, what you're you, trying you, to do, but that's not the same thing. You compared 9-11 to murking an Al-Qaeda guy. I, I, I'm just saying we're talking about bad systems, but good outcomes. Well, here, can can I jump in here, guys, for a second? Because I think that, I, I think that you know, one of the the like elephants in the room here and, and one of the reasons why i just think that a lot of the things that we are doing uh in afghanistan with our drone program vosh are undeniably maintaining the fact that the taliban is not going to negotiate with us in good faith right they will not why would they if we just assassinated uh what's his fucking face uh uh I forgot, I keep forgetting his name too yeah, yeah so. dude uh, what was that yeah, Aman al Zawahari or something like that. Yeah. I, I'm fucking terrible at pronouncing people's names. Anyway, a big Al Qaeda leader, second in chain of command, right? Okay. Uh, you know, if we keep doing that, and then we also just agreed earlier harmoniously for a moment that it was absolutely terrible uh, what happened in January of this year in Kabul uh, with the children that were massacred by the drone strikes. I just think that you can't both say, oh, I am pro diplomacy, yet I still think that it's justified for the United States to go in there and keep salting a massive wound. The only way that the uh, Taliban will ever become an est esteemed, established uh, political um, you know, figure or, or leaders of a nation, whatever, the only way that that's ever going to happen is if the United States actually comes to negotiate in good faith, which we never do, right? So here I am advocating that instead of saying, oh, you know, damned if we do, damned if we don't, let's just drone away anyway. Let's say, no, let's change our policy in Afghanistan. Let's go there. Let's go in there and negotiate and say, all right, here's the way that international law is dramatically staged in the West's favor. It's impossible that we will ever change it, probably 100% out of our favor, but let's offer them a bunch of their fucking money back. All of it is what we should do right and let's say okay here are the ways in which case we're willing to negotiate in good faith we're not going to bomb your fucking country anymore we're not going to take out any of your civilians we're not we're going to uh, stop starving your children uh you know we're going to provide people with uh you know resources to deal with the millions of uh starving orphans that are in your country now because of the wrongdoing that we did i think all of us on this uh stream would agree that you know that We've done a lot of wrong in Afghanistan. So the, if we need to start building amends with these people, if we ever want them to negotiate in good faith, otherwise they are just going to continue to see us as the monsters that we've deserved to be seen as on the international stage. We can't simultaneously be the good guys and the people who drone their country to bits and pieces because every time we do, we just create more uh, justification for them to come and, uh, you know, do a, a terrorist response, right? So like I always, I agree with that to an extent, but it's not like they haven't broken agreements before, right? For instance, so have we though? That's what I'm well, saying. Wait, I, know, I know, I know that. Again, it's this isn't like a moral high. I don't care. I, I'm, I don't like America. It's not like a defending America's right. We just have the power to make these decisions, so we have to trust or decide not to trust. The Taliban, for instance, agreed not to house Al Qaeda leaders in Afghanistan. So technically, the fact that that guy was in Afghanistan at all was a violation of agreements that we made with them. I, I have to ask, like, because if we could guarantee their good faith negotiation, I would be on board. But what what would you do if um, if the Taliban like negotiated with us, mm -hmm. got their resources back, lied, mm -hmm. broke their agreements, which they've done before, um, and just continued operating as a tyrannical, oppressive, you know, um, uh, you know. Uh, governmental force you're asking what i would do if i was like you know well, president but, well basically if they lied about it got their resources back and then they continue to house like terrorist leaders who make attacks uh both against us and our allies like would you would you risk a full conflict with afghanistan by sending in troops for an arrest or would you drone strike the leaders or would you just let it be because like we can't do anything without a full invasion well i don't think that you can't do anything without a full invasion and i think that you know from my own perspective point like i don't support the united states being the world police operation so if you're asking me what i would personally do i would say that you know we need to uh continue to strengthen an international coalition that's going to find the uh, uh, states that you know perform and uh, commit terrorist acts or sponsor terrorist acts uh, guilty. Uh, I think that that's the only reasonable solution. I I don't think that uh, there's any way to gain or any way to maintain any kind of order uh, internationally, and I don't think there's any way to maintain any kind of respectability or. Um, you know, fair ground if you're going to have one nation state playing world police. So I, I, I think if you're what asking do we me, do, how we... like, like, they, do we just let them be? Because that's like a national security issue, right? Like, if you're if the terrorist leaders are still operating, they just have a base in Afghanistan. Like, do we just let them? But like, again, 
What about the terrorist leaders that are here in America that from their perspective have massacred, I mean, not just from their perspective, factually have massacred and killed far more people over there than they have over here. I know there are people here in America who deserve to hang for what they've done, but we're only talking about like what to do about this situation here, right? Uh, Look, I'm a social, I'm a revolutionary, at least ideologically I am. There are plenty of people here in America for whom I have strong words, okay? You know, I don't want to get TOS here by, by YouTube or whatever, but trust me, okay, I reserve plenty of enmity for the people within our own country with our own systems um but just it's if you were like with the system we have now if we were dealing with like active terrorist leaders in a country like afghanistan now if they were in iran or something or saudi arabia you would have to negotiate iran and saudi arabia are developed actualized countries that are capable of sitting with us at a table and talking it out maybe they don't always act in good faith more saudi arabia than iraq than iran historically um but you can talk with them afghanistan won't like because they're breaking their agreements in this hypothetical so do you just let them be or like how do you how do you address that i guess i mean generally like i said i'm an anti-interventionist um but if there's actually someone who is guilty like we talked about i i do generally think that yeah if we need to you know go in and apprehend him then that should be the way we do it and you know at least then we're actually facing the potential consequences of our involvement abroad rather than just sending some drone to you know kill them and probably civilians as well i just don't see how like that situation justifies us doing terrorism civilians would die if we sent in people to arrest a terrorist leader being held by the taliban like we would be fighting we we would have to make our way through population centers taliban soldiers would be there innocent taliban i mean a lot of these people are just 18 year olds who you know um grew up in the wrong like islamicist propaganda um like you would like it seems like that would inevitably lead to far more death of innocent maybe not innocent untried people than a drone strike would um in a consequential sense, it just seems like a really difficult bid. And I don't think there's an easy answer anywhere here. I don't like really celebrate any of this. Right. I celebrate the death of an Al Qaeda leader. The whole drone malarkey, you know, I don't think there's any like clean moral side here. Um, the nature of drones, they're terrifying. We have the ability to enact our power anywhere um, with, with very little oversight and with very little commitment. You know, no troops on the ground means no cameras. Uh, it, it, we can get away with a lot. And it just seems like a, it's a program that lacks oversight. But working within the framework that we have, the fact that drones are just the future of warfare and military engagement, I guess if I had to choose between risking another ground war with the Taliban, doing nothing, or just sending in a drone to kill the guy, I would choose the drone. And I think there are problems with that, but I think there are worse problems with the other two options. Well, yeah, that's my whole uh, premise of my argument, Vosh, is that I just re- reject that dichotomy, right? Because I agree with you 100%. I agree with you that, you know, there are massive drawbacks to having a groundswell of individuals that, you know, are, the U.S. Army just go in there and storm and take whoever terrorists down. Uh, but I also think there's massive amounts of problems with the United States drone program as it is. And that's why I think we need to all collectively advocate for a strategy that completely eradicates that drone pro- uh, problem, not one that just says, okay this is a necessary evil that we have to live with it's kind of like uh in a weird sense and i'm not trying to be like you know too far-fetched here but it's kind of like capitalism right like capitalism is something that it seems like we just have to live with right but we all three here know that we don't we can choose to live another way we can collectively raise our voices that we can make changes and that we can overturn this deeply rigid capitalist militaristic system and i think that the same perspective that we have on that where we know it's an uphill battle where we know we're going to have to take small victories you know three steps forward two steps back persistence you know that is the way of the you know uh, social and political change in this country right uh but we have to reject the framing that the like, just like we have to reject the framing that the only way forward is under u.s capitalism and how can we you know uh ease the suffering of individuals under capitalism like no we have to imagine a way that is you know completely free of suffering and abandons capitalism i just think you have to do the same thing when it comes to drone policy and u.s military industrial complex you have to envision a better world hold on a second i think you have to envision a better world because if we do not then we have to be signing our names off uh, on the de- on the death certificates of all of these individuals, whether or not their deaths come from international terrorists, whether they come from the United States terrorist activities abroad, whether they come from drone strikes, whatever it is. Oh, uh, you know, we, we're complicit in that. And the and I, I just think that we'd all three agree that the only path forward is for us to envision a world where we do not have those kinds of problems. And, you know, I'm open to all kinds of suggestions, but I just think we have to reject the supremacy of drone warfare and U.S. militarism. Well, I. 
there's a lot wrapped in there. I think you can challenge a ton about our drone policy while acknowledging that in some circumstances, a drone strike on a terrorist leader might be a good thing. Because what you're talking about is a wholesale rejection or possibly the use of drones exclusively for on the ground military purposes, a la Bayraktar, Ukraine, so on and so on. Um, it's it, The drones are here to stay. They're a militarily efficient weapon. It's just how they're used, really. And right now, we have very little oversight in how we use them. I do vehemently oppose that. This is just an instance where I'm um, more accepting of it because it feels like the in this situation, the other the consequences of other sets of actions might have been worse. Yeah. Um, but that's it, really. It's not it's not a strong ideological commitment. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I do hope, ultimately, you know, that that our, our policy gets shaved down to a point where we're incredibly moderate with our use of these tools. Biden, for example, has been doing so many fewer drone strikes than Obama did. In the right. Later, right. And we and, give him and, credit and, for that. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, clearly, you know, there are changes we made. Trump did mm -hmm. restrict the reporting on the um, civilian deaths from drones. Right. Like there was a, a like he restricted the public info access on who the targets of the drones were and who was affected. I think it was something like that. I would need to reread it. There are ways to make it better and worse. But if look, if the broader policy is a reduction in US military hegemony, a reduction in the poor oversight of our systems that we use to kill, I'm fully on board with both of you. We might draw the lines at different points on very specific niche issues. Mm -hmm. And murking the the one of the guys by 9-11 is definitely a niche issue. That is not every person who's been killed by drones. I wish, not by a long shot, right? Very, very, very select. Um, but I, I think on the whole, we, we we have similar political instincts on this. Yeah, no, I understand that, Vosh. And I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Like I said, I can sympathize in specific incidents, just like with the death penalty. I can understand why people would make the argument. It's just that in principle, I have to disagree with it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, again, I understand where you're coming from. The only thing I worry about is that I feel like sometimes you're using this excuse of U.S. hegemony and the fact that we are the superpower. You're almost using it to like excuse or like normalize the war crimes we commit as if they aren't terrorism versus when Al Qaeda uh, does war something crime. or ex like, you know, blows something up. It is terrorism and they and they don't have the right to strike back. But we do, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it almost sometimes reminds me of like the, the people that defend Russia and the Ukraine Russia war. Uh, oh, well, like, look at all this context. You know, they're the they're the dominant force in their region. Uh, look at all the stuff that happened five years ago. All these excuses, et cetera, et cetera. They have the right to do this. I sometimes hear echoes of that for you just on the pro American. America side. Not that I'm saying you are pro U.S. imperialism, but I do think that sometimes you, whether intentionally or not, I do think you end up kind of regurgitating the like State Department framing the pro America hegemony perspective uh, when you talk about these things versus just acknowledging where war crimes are, uh, whoever commits them, uh, and the fact that any war crimes here though. I, I don't think it's a war crime to take out an Al Qaeda guy. You know. Um, I understand that, but that's like one in a hundred drone strikes. Most of them I'm are not, not defending the other. But you, but you don't. You said we have a justification whole, to do drone strikes in Afghanistan, not just the specific one. Afghanistan is an area where there might be a pretext. Like Afghanistan is a field where I think drone strikes can be permitted if the targets permitted. But that doesn't mean every target in Afghanistan is justifiable. That only means that it's a it's a fair ground for acceptable use of drone right, strikes. Right, but we're talking about the U.S. military here in the State Department, and if you give them an inch, they're going to take a fucking mile. As we've seen, if you give them one justification to do something that's illegal and a war crime, they're going to do it in a hundred other instances which aren't justified at all. That's how this works, and that's the problem here. Obviously, but in the specific that's a instance, slippery slope argument that you can make for literally anything. Like if you if you give them pretext to invade Germany as part of World War II, then you've given them pretext to invade like Vietnam. If you think it's okay to arrest a person who's raped people, then you think it's okay to arrest people who have done nothing wrong. Like yeah, we're there are systems of power out there that are very, very, very dangerous. I'm only excusing this instance. And I think that Afghanistan's an area where we have less leeway for diplomatic negotiations. So just to clarify, elsewise. this is the only drone strike that you're okay with happening no, in the, Afghanistan. There are a few others. There have been retaliatory drone strikes that have exclusively killed members of insurgent groups that attacked our uh, soldiers that I'm okay with. This is just one of the rare, because like overwhelmingly- Even though those drone, drone strikes strike, likely killed civilians, you're still okay with that? No, I agree with the ones that don't kill civilians. I generally agree with them after the fact. Well, that's like saying I'm pro-war only when it's good. Like you have to yeah. be either. No, no. Yeah, no, you're completely on board with that one. I am pro-war when the war is good. I generally think that an anti-interventionist uh, approach is better and that we should try to avoid war at all, uh, no matter what, that we should always seek a diplomatic response. And if any civilians have any chance of dying, then we just create the possibility of becoming just as bad of uh, terrorists as the terrorists we're fighting.
like World War II? Like, were we okay, doing well, the Holocaust? You know what I'm talking because, about. Well, no, wait. Well, well, you can't shy away from the counterexample when your argument is a rejection of counterexamples. World War II was an example where, yeah, we did we did do a bit of trolling on, on Normandy. And yeah, I think it was pretty OK. Mm -hmm. I'm OK with uh, our, our invention. Now, we did fucked up things during World War II. Don't get me wrong, right? Japanese internment camps be a big one domestically mm -hmm. across the uh, across the sea. We right. fucking bombed Nagasaki right. and Hiroshima. If we were talking we, about like a, a morally a morally consistent, morally authoritative government, then I would agree with you, Vaj. However, how many wars have happened since World War II and how many of them were justified? Zero of them were justified that were carried out by the U.S. Absolutely zero. You have to go back to the 40s uh, to find a war that the U.S. has participated in that no was problem. even remotely moral. We're talking about a literal terrorist government here that indiscriminately massacres civilians under the guise, as you always talk about, Russia has an excuse. Obviously, they're going to have a justification for invading Ukraine. Obviously, every superpower is always going to have a justification or excuse for whatever they're doing. Why do you not see that as being the case here? Well, would you say that as an argument against invading Germany in World War II? Because you would be afraid of giving the racist white supremacist. We're not talking about World War II. We're talking about the present day and the fact that every war since World War II that the U.S. has been engaged in has been immoral and unethical well, and what unjustified if, and illegal. What if this drone strike was the World War II of drone strikes? I mean, that sounds like a joke, but that is what I'm arguing. Overwhelmingly, war is a bad thing. Overwhelmingly, drone strikes are a bad thing. But there are instances, I think, where they can be justifiable. Just like the death the... penalty. I, I agree. In certain instances, I can understand the logic behind it, but I'm not going to legitimize the system as a whole because of that. But if the so the death penalty entails a counter option of indefinite internment. But what if you had a dangerous criminal who you was was on the run, you know? They might get away. You you can't arrest them because they're in a. If a, we had sent people to apprehend boat. Zahari and he was running away and shooting at us, then yeah, if he got killed in the crossfire, then that's his own fault. However, that's not what happened. We sent a drone there to extrajudicially assassinate him. That's not the same thing. I agree that they're not the same things, but I do think that's a more um, a more direct comparison. Uh, even a t in, in the death penalty, the choice not to engage in the death penalty means that they live and that they're contained in the prison. Um, whereas the choice not to drone strike mm -hmm. could potentially mean they die anyway. It could mean they get away entirely. It's a little more ambiguous because you're not making the decision after they've been incarcerated. It's uh, it's a little more up in the air. We do the same thing with criminals, right? Like cops will chase criminals and, you know, maybe a cop fires and maybe the criminal wasn't immediately a threat to the cop, but sometimes it's just justifiable if the criminal has a gun and is running into a civilian area. These ambiguities are really tough to get around on a principle basis, because if you do so, you know, is it wrong for cops to shoot people who are unarmed? Overwhelmingly, I agree. But are people who are un unarmed entirely lacking in lethal threat to others? No, they're not. There could be a gun on the ground. You know, I like to evaluate stuff based on a case by case yeah. basis, one in which I'm overwhelmingly against the hegemonic solution. But every once in a while, you have a World War II, you have a Al Qaeda 9 11 terrorist guy, and you have a person who's unarmed but is like seconds away from menacing or yeah. killing a civilian. I see the point you're trying to make, Vosh. And I think the reason that we keep going in this merry go round is because w what it comes down to is that if you're trying to split the minutia about whether or not, you know, w one is like on paper and in, in each each instance better or less in terms of uh, casualties in a vacuum, then you can kind of play that game for a long time, right? You can say, oh, okay, well, you know, what if in this situation it's better to have, you know, hit him with a drone because it would have caused more deaths. But what I think that the real problem and the crux of the disagreement that we all have here uh, is that I, I think Gavin and I are both saying that even though it might behoove us in certain instances to use a drone in a specific instance instead of sending a ground strike in that we need to radically shift the United States foreign policy in a way that it does not require us to uh, fucking do that. What we I need agree. to yeah, and then I think we have harmonious agreement. Yeah. On also, that. also, Vaj, you brought up this example of uh, the cops shooting uh, someone who's like running away or whatever. This policy has also led to cops abusing their authority over and over again as an excuse to murder un unarmed innocent people. Like, yeah, even your I want to change the policy. What was that? No, that's a perfect comparison. I want to change the policy, but there have been instances where a criminal running away did need to get shot because it's possible that they were right about to menace, threaten a civilian. They might have had a weapon on them that a cop saw earlier. So the policy I disagree with, just like both of you, I disagree with our drone policy. I disagree with our attitude towards war. But 
even in policies that I disagree with, there are always going to be individual instances of things that I think in the specific context of the situation worked out okay. Yeah, and well, I, mean, I believe that about lots of bad systems. Sure, I have sure. to. I'm an anarchist. I, I understand that, Vosh. And again, the only thing I uh, disagree with is just that in principle, I have to come out against the system as a whole, a system which leads to uh, the deaths of estimates, say, nine out of 10 uh, targets, you know, being civilian. Obviously, we know that thanks to the whistleblower, Daniel Hale, who's currently in prison for telling the truth about our drone program. Again, if we were a moral government, if we were a government that was consistent when it came to picking and choosing our battles, then I might agree, like theoretically, but that's not the case. We're dealing with a government that, as I said, has since World War II only engaged in unethical and immoral and illegal wars. I mean, we were talking, you were talking about mines yesterday uh, and, and how horrific you know, they are. There's another example of the terrorism we've wrought all over the world. I don't think that justifies other, you know, countries drone striking our leaders. Um, so just as a principle. Inshallah. <laughs> Every once in a while, there's a World War II. That's all I'm saying. Well, and I would never. And if people back in like 1939 were like, you know, we can't invade Germany. America is a mm -hmm. white supremacist nation that has historically used its power to colonize the Philippines and do horrible things in Latin America and Panama and so on and so on. Sure. And I would say, yeah, I, I think agree. World War II was bad, Vosh. I think everyone agrees that the Hitler and the Nazis were bad. That's, I, no, no, I, know, I that's... know you think that. I'm just saying I would be like, listen, we did. We, Teddy Roosevelt, fucked up Latin America. We fucked up Panama. We've done horrible shit. But just this time, ah, just this time, yeah, I think we've got a good one. Yeah, and I that's think been, we and, finally and, found it. And that's it. been the justification for every single U.S. Inter intervention and invasion since World War II. And it's resulted in uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands and millions of people dead all around the world as a direct result of the enrichment of the you know uh, weapons manufacturers and defense contractors. Of course, there's going to be a but justification. You, you would have invaded Germany. <laughs> Again. We can go back to World War Wait, II. But, and but, but there we go. That's it. Yes, people will lie. They will misrepresent information. They will try to sell you on every war, every drone strike. But just because they lie all the time, just because our government lies all the time, which it does, doesn't mean that every once in a while there isn't just through right. sheer. Okay. Well, I think that's outcomes, a good. You know, I think a instead of at a good outcome, instead of running in circles, Vaj, I think that we can agree to disagree and agree that yeah, well, we every agree on every the, the the well, no, the, that's what I'm saying, broader. and we can agree that every once in a while, even within a very unjust and unethical system, yes, every once in a while there is an example you can point to as the United States government and the State Department loves to that yes, every once in a while something is justified. Uh, yeah, still even a drone strike. I still as they are. right, and I and I'm not denying that. I'm not in the interest of denying reality. I'm just saying that that's what a principle is. Even if the every once in a while you can find an exemption or something that you know goes against the principle, you still generally uphold the principle. Again, same with the death penalty, as I keep going back to. But again, we don't have to keep running in circles and talking about fucking the Nazis. I don't really see how that's productive. I love talking about the Nazis. I know. No, I fully agree with what you're saying. And if I had the chance to, if I could snap my fingers, do away with our entire policy with regards to drone intervention, including in Afghanistan. This is only a, as long as we have the bad system, one in every thousand outcomes will be acceptable to me. Same way I feel about a lot of bad systems. You know, I don't like capitalism, but, uh, you know, they make good video games now and again, whatever, you know, you roll the dice, you get what you get. Um, but if I could take it all away, the one in 1000 good and the 999 out of the thousand bad, I would. And I think you both would, too. And I mean, well, yeah, we agree on that. I think that, yeah, I think that that's a good place to wrap this discussion. I thought this was a lot more fruitful uh, than, you know, and, and good good faith in discussing. Obviously, we were, uh, you know, I, I won't lie, Vosh. I was a little terrified coming into the Vosh's den. Uh, I thought this I'd love was to a... talk to you in the future, too. I love yeah, to talk no, to you that's guys. what I'm saying. I, I think that we've I think we've established a good rapport here, and I would be more than interested in, in chatting again over either areas of, again, agreement or disagreement, because I like having nuanced discussions like this where nobody like fucking blows their gasket. So, you know, thank you for having us on and thank you for chatting with us. Yeah, no, the pleasure is mine. I, I don't like shouty arguments for the most part. They don't get, I mean, they're not that fun. I, I like talking to folks. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks, Vosh. We appreciate the conversation. It was really fascinating. Um, have a good rest of your day, man. Be well. Peace out. Peace out, bro. Wow, what a day. We just Woo! fucking went round and round with Vosh, and I think we held our own, Gavin. I thought we both did pretty good. I was, I was, I, I thought, I thought we made our points clearly. It'll be up to the audience to decide, uh, but you know what? Uh, you know, shake hands, good discussion, good debate. Thanks for Vosh for, you know, engaging with us.